Hello and welcome to the Wednesday live stream to help you improve your English. If this is the first time you're watching this, my name's Craig and I'm from a website called mansioningles.com and there you can find lots of material and courses to help you learn English for free. And if you're interested in a podcast, um, there's also a podcast at inglespodcast.com that will also help you improve your English. Now, if this is not your first time watching, I know what you're thinking. Where is Monica? Because last week, Lynn was here and the two of us um, last Wednesday did a Facebook live or a live stream. But this week, um, Monica is not with me. And the reason is she's having a bit of a rest. She's very, very busy which is a good thing. And I'm really pleased that um, she has a lot of work, but she just needs a, a few weeks or some time off to, um, to concentrate on some other things. So that means that it's me on my own this week. Now, I do have one or two things planned that I think um, will be useful for you to, um, to help you with your English mainly focused around vocabulary and also some speaking fluency. Um, but while we're waiting for some people to join us, and I can see people are already coming in, um, Dali's here, hello, and Heidi from Buenos Aires, good to see you here. Um, so yeah, I was just saying that it's just me this week, I've got some vocabulary exercises for you, because it's always, it's always good to help you with your vocabulary, to learn some new words. Um, and I want to begin in a couple of minutes looking at some ways of how you can improve your fluency and your speaking in English. Um, hi, Christine. Good to see you. And Siham is here. Katia from Costa Rica. Lovely to see everybody coming in live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you for your company. I hope, I hope you're going to find this useful. Hi, Carlos. Um, lots of people coming in, so it's wonderful to see you all here. So the first thing I wanted to speak about with, with you is connected to fluency and how to improve your speaking, so speaking fluency. Now, one thing I've noticed from some of my students is they're studying grammar, they're studying vocabulary, maybe they're doing a course, but they don't have enough practice with speaking. And I'm wondering why. So that's my first question to you before I give you one or two solutions, ways that you can improve your speaking. I want you to tell me, please, in the chat, just write... Um, an answer for me. If you aren't practicing your speaking, what is holding you back? What is stopping you? What is preventing you from speaking English? I mean, maybe it's got something to do with time. Maybe you're very busy, but you're connecting here to, to watch me with this stream. So you do have some time. Maybe it's opportunity. Maybe there are no English speakers in your area you don't know how to connect online to speak English with other people. Maybe you're feeling a bit shy. Maybe you're feeling a bit timid, a bit uneasy, a bit uncomfortable with English. So you, you want to keep studying until your English is absolutely perfect and you don't make any mistakes. What is stopping you from actually practicing your speaking? Maybe you're worried about making mistakes and you're a bit nervous about that. So please let me know in the chat what is holding you back when it comes to speaking. I know some of you are taking classes. I know Christine is studying at the moment. Is that right, Christine, at the language school? So some of you are practicing speaking. But for those of you who are not, why? Why aren't you practicing your speaking? Um, see how I'm Siham says, yeah, it's making mistakes. That's a common reason. I hear that a lot, that you, you, don't, you don't feel that you 
have a good enough level maybe to speak without making mistakes. Um, yeah, that's very true, Aravala. There's a common trend for students when they learn English. They think it's only about learning grammar. That's uh, another thing I hear a lot from my students. But let me share your share my screen with you because there's a couple of solutions that you might find useful. And I just want to let you know about these websites. Um, I hope you can see that clearly enough. The first website I want to show you is called italki. And perhaps you've heard of it. It is a marketplace to put together students and teachers. So you can find a private teacher on italki. But maybe you didn't know that you can also find a community of people learning English and you can connect online and speak with them for free. So what you need to do if you're interested is go to italki.com, create yourself a, an account. So put your email in there, make sure you have an account, which I have done. And then if you go to the For You tab at the top here, on the right, there's something called language partner. I'm not sure if you can see that clearly. It's it's come up quite small on my screen. But this area here is language partner. And if you click on language partner, you'll be able to find people to talk to on the internet and practice your speaking in English. So you don't need to pay for a teacher on italki. You can if you want. But it's also very useful to find somebody or a group of people to talk to for free. That's one suggestion. Another suggestion is this website, Hello. I don't know who these people are who are waving. <laughs> They're from all different, different countries. But it's very, very similar. There is uh, a place where you can find a teacher and study with a private teacher. But there's also a community that you can, when you sign in, it's very similar. You find a community and you can practice with other students for free. So it works in a similar way to italki. And there's also a, a community there that you can use um, without actually paying anything. The next one I want to show you is called speakingclub.com. Now, you need a minimum level of intermediate to use this, and you need to register. And there are groups that speak together, and it's free for one weekly meeting. So you don't need to pay if you only meet once a week. And it's meeting in a group, practicing with non-native speakers, and it's a way to meet people, make some friends, and obviously practice your English. And if you want to meet more than once a week, then they have different paid plans that you can use to practice more than once a week. And the final one I want to show you is called meetup.com. And this is very good for personal one-to-one -one um, meeting in person, face to face. So you create an account, you log in, and then you put in where you're from. So here, first you put what you want to do. So for example, I'm going to put speak English in that space there. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to put my city, which is Valencia, Spain. You have different, oh, Valencia, Venezuela, Valencia, Spain. And then you search. And it will show you groups that meet um, in your area. So you can go along to a cafe, 
um, any distance, any type. So I'm, you can go online or you can go in person. I'm going in person. And you can find language exchanges in your area. Here, for example, next Wednesday in my area, there's a language exchange in a Spanish cafe here in Valencia. So there are many different clubs of people that meet in person. And if you prefer face-to-face -face rather than online, you can use meetup.com to practice your English. So I hope that's um, interesting for you and I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think. Um, let's see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, Diana says uh, lack of confidence because you don't know a lot of vocabulary and grammar. Yeah, that's I've heard that as well. And the only thing I can say, Diana, is that you need to start speaking. And if you feel a bit shy and, and you don't have much confidence with a native speaker or, an, or a native teacher, then why not go to one of these websites and start speaking with someone who has more or less the same level as you from a different country. And then they're in exactly the same boat, which means they're in exactly the same situation as you. Um, see, Hamza, I do practice, but before that was the main, probably the main thing or the main problem. That's good that you're practicing at the moment. Practice as much as possible. Um, in Colombia, he's practicing with an American soldier. Wow, fantastic. As long as you're practicing, then, then that's good. Um, a suggestion from Maddo, he turns on um, his mobile phone in English and Google answers in English. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, any voice that, um, what do they call the AI systems in phones and also on your computer and things like the lady in the tube, I don't want to say the name, A-L-E-X-A, -E I don't want to say the name of the Amazon device because everybody's device is going to start if you have it in the room. But yeah, speaking to these devices in English is a great way because it, it improves your pronunciation as well. If it doesn't understand what you're saying, you need to rephrase, you need to speak a bit clearer, a bit slower, maybe change some vowel sounds so that the device can understand you and answer you in English. Um, yes, Carlos, so I will share the links um, a bit later. And I'll make sure that you've got those links. Actually, let me do that now. I'll put them very quickly in the chat for you. So I'm sharing those links one by one. So if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook, you will be able to see those links in a second. Hello TV. I, I have not used Hello TV personally. But I do know people, some of my students have recommended it, and they really, really like it. And it's very similar to italki. So um, I trust their recommendations when they say that it's useful and it's, it's good. So there you are. The links are in the chat, Carlos. Um, yeah, Juan saying also that he's a bit embarrassed. Um, about speaking, use the the preposition about. I'm embarrassed about speaking. Um, I understand that. Yeah, I was embarrassed when I first started learning Spanish. But um, if you don't start, then you're not going to improve. So you just have to jump into the water and and just start speaking. And if you start feeling comfortable with someone, then it's it becomes a lot easier when you begin. It's just taking the first step. Um, yeah, as Oraval said, discipline and commitment are essential as well. Very, very important. That's true. Okay, well, that's the first thing I wanted to talk to you about. The second thing is um, to practice some vocabulary. So let's practice some vocabulary. I've got two vocabulary exercises I want to do with you. And the first one is a bit of fun. So we're going to 
look at word families. I'm going to give you five separate groups of word families. And I want you to write as quickly as possible in the chat words that are part of the family. For example, if I say technology, which is an umbrella word, you might say mobile phone, computer, AI, engineer, software, hardware. So you need to think of 15 words, at least 15 words, connected to the main word. Um, and our first family, are you ready? Is clothes. So write quickly in the chat, as quickly as possible, items of clothing. Let's see how quickly we can get to 15 items of clothing. Anything that you wear, just write it quickly in the chat and let's see how many we can get. Hi, Anna. Good to see you. Dress, skirt. That's two. Very good. Very quick, Christine. Elena, well done. Now, Heidi, dress. As you've, now that's too, too slow. Christine has already thought of dress. So we've got dress and skirt. We've got two. 13 more. T-shirt, says Natalia. That's three. Very good. Mm, not wearing. That's a verb. Items of clothing. Klaukam. Items of clothing. Um, Maru, sorry, not Klaukam. Klaukam says dress skirt, tie, scarf, blouse. That's six. Suit, says Elena, that's seven. Well done. Dress doesn't count because we've said dress, Anna, Laura. We have seven words. We need five more. Sweater, very good, Natalia. That's eight. Eight words. Shorts, fantastic. That's nine. Keep going. We want six more words. Jumper. Uh, that's the same as sweater, isn't it? That's the same as sweater. Underwear. Yes. Okay, Natalia. Five more. Cardigan. Fantastic. That's a good word. Cardigan. Rebecca in Spanish. Four more. Hat, raincoat, gloves. Fantastic. One more. Tie. No, tie we've said. Tie, Elena. Socks. Yeah. Siam's got socks. That's 15 words. Fantastic. Very well done. Panty hose, it would be, um, Anna Laura. Panty hose, not holes. You don't want holes in your panty hose. Hoodie is another good word. That's like a, a zip up sweater with a hood on your head. Um, well done. Okay, let's do one more. So we've done clothes. Let's do a different group. Okay, this is a different family of words. Again, I want 15 from you, and you need to write different kinds of sports. Can you think of 15 different sports? Okay, I know you're thinking, what's the most popular sport in the world? Rugby, soccer, basketball. Tennis, golf, that's five. You're doing really well. Swimming, skiing, says Anna. Oh, rhythm gymnastics. Very good, Christine. Volleyball, they play that on the beach here in Valencia. Volleyball, that's nine. Hockey, very, very good, Maru. That's ten, we want five more. Five more sports that have not been mentioned. Chess. Is chess a sport? It's a board game. Yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah, chess. Four more. Athletics, says Glaucam. Athletics. Um, fencing. Very good. Kite surfing. Snowboarding. Cycling and running. That's it. That's 15. You can stop. Very good. That was quicker. Fantastic. Cricket, oh, that's a boring game. Running. Notice that some of these sports end in ING. If they are activities, they end in ING. Kite surfing, trekking, and the collocation is go. 
So you go trekking, go skiing, go kite surfing, go windsurfing, go skating. Other sports you play, you play football, play tennis, play hockey, etc. Very good. Okay, let me give you one more word family. Our third word family is different kinds of shops. More difficult, isn't it? Can you think of 15 names of different shops? Not brand names, different places where you buy things, okay? So, for example, um, El Cote Inglés doesn't count because it's the name of a store. It's not the name of a shop. Greengrocers, that's one. Boutique, very good, that's two. Um, grocery, Natalia, will probably be a grocery, a grocery store. Yeah, a grocery store. Fishmonger, fantastic, well done. Bakery, that's five, or aval, well, well done. Um, bookstore, that's six. Um, not butchery, but butchers. Yeah, butchers with an S that they sell meat, don't they? Barber shop, very good. That's eight. Off license. What what does an off license sell? Very good, Christine. They sell alcohol, beer, wines, spirits. Off license. Okay, you've got nine. You need f six more. Six more shops. It's getting difficult, isn't it? It's getting difficult. Off license, barbershop, butchers, bookstore, bakery, fishmonger, chemist. Very good, Mary Luth. That's chemist. Five more. Duty free. Mm, okay, duty free. Yeah, that's a shop, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Pet shop. Yeah, you buy pets in a pet shop. That's we need three more. Pharmacy is the same as chemist. It's just a different word for the same shop. So no. And liquor store is the same as off license. Cloud cam. So we still need three. Drug store is, it's a chemist as well. A drug store is a chemist. So no. Um, you buy bread in a baker's, a bakery. Um, not library store, bookstore, Carlos. A bookstore is where you buy books, and a library is where you borrow books. Uh, a technology store, yes. Technology store, that's good. Um, we need two more. A cake shop, I'll accept that. One more. And a perfume shop, that's it. And, of course, a supermarket, yeah. And Carlos says a sex shop. Well, yeah, I suppose you could buy sex things in a sex shop. And a flower store. Yeah, Diana, well done. We've got our 15 easily. Okay, let's go on to the next group of words. So 15 ways of traveling. 15 means of transport. That's quite difficult as well. Transport. How can you move around? Different modes of transport. Car, well done, Diana. Truck, well done. Heidi, uh, ferry. Bus, tra bus and metro, that's five. Airplane, that's six. Um, motorcycle, very good. Cloud come, that's seven. A cruise ship, says Aldo. Yes, absolutely, a cruise ship. Uh, and a boat, which is different, isn't it? A boat is much smaller, a cruise ship is huge. Underground and tube, yes, that's 10. Taxi, that's 11. A trolley? No, a trolley you push. You can't use a trolley as a way, a means of transport. Um, skates, yes. Skates like a skateboard or roller skates or rollerblades, definitely. Three more. 
A bike. Nobody said bicycle. Yep. Two more. Uh, subway medal. Somebody said subway. Somebody said tube before. So we need two more that have not been said. A balloon. Well done, Francisca. Very imaginative. One more. Of course, a balloon, a hot air balloon. You can travel with that. One more. Nos falta uno. Um, tandem bicycle. No, bike. it's the same as a bicycle, Christine. Submarine. Diana's got it. Submarine. Well done. Fantastic. Okay, we've got one more group. This is the last group. Okay. And it is professions. Can you name 15 professions or jobs? 15 professions. I think you'll probably get this because you're doing really, really well. Magician. <laughs> That's the first thing that Cloudcom thought of. Magician. Nurse, of course. Doctor. Teacher. Barber. Well done. Attorney, that's six. Attorney is the American word for lawyer. Accountant, very good, Christine. Archaeologist, fantastic. Hairdresser, which is different from a barber because a barber cuts men's hair and a hairdresser cuts um, men and women's hair. Um, journalist, well done, Juan. That's ten. Puppeteer, <laughs> fantastic, I like it. That's 11. Surgeon. Well done, Heidi. That's a kind of doctor, but it's a different uh, profession. That's 12. Salesman, 13. Vet, 14. One more. Policeman. Well done, Anna. We've got our 15. We've also got pilot, driver, anesthesiologist. Nice word, Cloakum. And lawyer. Yeah. Receptionist. Well done. Well, you're very, very good. I was impressed by, by that. You definitely know your word groups. Okay. Now, moving on then, staying with vocabulary, let's do something a bit different. Gap fill. Let's practice some vocabulary. This will mainly test your collocation because a lot of these are collocation let me share my screen for a second and make sure that you're seeing what I'm seeing. Here it is, I think. No, nope, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be here. Oh, here it is. That's it. Share. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see it? Let me take professions off. So you've got four choices with four, four choices with um, with these sentences. And you need to choose the best one, A, B, C, or D. So you can put a letter in the chat or you can write the word that you think is missing. So always look for the preposition. We've got a preposition after the gap with. Make sure that matches and goes with the word. And a lot of these are connected to collocation. So make sure that the word you choose collocates with the words around it make sure it goes together with the words around it so we're getting some answers coming in resulted d b d hmm some mixed results all attempts to rescue the trapped workman mm, with failure now the key the secret here is the preposition. And the answer is not D because resulted in failure. So resulted is often followed with the preposition in. So D is impossible. 
Yeah, it is difficult, isn't it? Um, finalized is also with in. Finalized in something. The answer is A, met. Met with failure. So met likes to go or to meet likes to go with the preposition with. Everything I do meets with failure or meets with success. So the answer to the first one is A, met. Let's do one more. Julie, <clears throat> excuse me, Julie had consistently arrived. That should be, oh, for some reason, that's not, uh... oh, that's it. Arrived late for work and finally paid the mm by losing her job. So if you're a Spanish speaker, you know that fine is multa. Fee is tasa, cost is what you pay, and price is precio. But what's the collocation in English here? Yeah, I know no one said A for the first one. <laughs> so which of these possibilities collocates with pay or paid? Pay the fee, pay the cost, pay the price, or pay the fine? The answer is paid the price. Paid the price. She finally paid the price by losing her job. So the answer is D. Now, you can pay a fee, you can pay a fine, but not in this context because it's not actually money you're paying. It's like when you do something and there's a consequence in life, you pay the price. I didn't study for the exam. I didn't pass. I paid the price for not studying. That was the consequence of it. So the answer there is D. Okay, we're find, you're finding these a bit difficult, I notice. Let's try another one. The economic crisis touches every mm. of our lives, every piece, every field, which is campo if you're a Spanish speaker, every division, or every aspect. Economic crisis touches every of our lives. What do you think? Hmm. You seem to think it's aspect. Christine says aspect. Claucam aspect. Eduardo says aspect. Any other suggestions? Carlos thinks it's field. Um, Francisca thinks it's field. I'll give you the answer. The answer is aspect. So well done if you chose D. Every aspect of our lives. Field, which is campo, is where things grow, isn't it? You can have a field of flowers. You can have a field of wheat, a field of sunflowers, a field of cotton. You can also use field when you speak about your job, your profession. I work in the engineering field. I work in the education field. I work in the technology field. But it doesn't collocate in this context of speaking about different aspects of our lives. But most of you knew that. I think well done if you got that right. Let's go to the next question. We used advertising to interest in our new product. Introduce interest, adopt interest, breed interest, or generate interest in our new product. By the way, these uh, vocabulary exercises are from level C1. So if you're getting these correct, you're doing really, really well because they are quite tricky. 
cloud cam thinks generate um diana i'm not sure what you wrote there dgen generate d generate said it says eduardo hi eduardo good to see you here uh, juan also agrees yep you all seem to agree that it's generate um and you're right yep to generate interest in our new product breed c um is usually connected with animals when you breed dogs you put dogs together so that you get puppies for example so you can breed horses breed cats breed animals breed so no that doesn't collocate the answer is d generate and most of you got that correct moving on to the next one health disorders a disorder is something that is not good it's something that is not in order it's something that's negative so if you have a health disorder like diabetes um, heart disease or alcoholism um, that's caused life expectancy life expectation life prediction or life forecast to fall in some countries what do you think is the answer here life so it's a word which collocates with life some of you are saying b Mary, maria angeles thinks it's a cloud comes going for b Lots of you going for B. Sylvia's going for la for A expectancy. B expectancy. Okay. Um, yes, it is A expectancy. Life expectancy. The number of years that you are expected to live. So it's life expectancy, and that's a unique collocation. We often speak about expectations. We have expectations about things that, that will happen in the future. But with the word life, the collocation is life expectancy when we're calculating how many years we have to live. And forecast is often connected to the weather you know you have a weather forecast it's going to rain tomorrow it's going to be sunny at the weekend so you forecast the weather very often and all of these words are really predictions you're predicting what's going to happen in the future but the strong collocation is life expectancy next one and what is mm, harry said i feel i'm being ignored now, if you're a Spanish speaker, and I know there are many Spanish speakers watching this uh, live and also probably the replay, it kind of translates as Adamas. And a more formal way of saying it will be, moreover, furthermore, another thing is, So what is extra, what is more, what is else, or what is plus? Harry said, I'm feeling, I feel I'm being ignored. Percy's going for A, what is extra? Cloudcam says more, Oroval says more, Anna says else. So you're quite divided here. You're not agreeing, are you? Aldo says B. Eli says else. The answer is more. What is more? And what is more? And another thing is, so when you want to add something to what you've said previously, you want to say something more. And what is more? I think I'm being ignored. Okay. So if that's new for you, make sure you write that down. Try and learn it. It's a very useful expression in conversation you give your opinion and and what is more i also think that 
Okay, let's go to one more. Uh, we paid the lawyer to... Now, this is a phrasal verb. Is it draw up, bring up, sign up, or do up a new will in case we pass away unexpectedly? The phrasal verb pass away means to die. And a will as a noun is un testamento in Spanish, a testament a legal contract that tells your family and everybody what happens to your money, your house, everything you own when you die, when you pass away. Um, so we're getting some mixed opinions here. Sylvia says draw up. Ana Laura says sign up. Arturo says sign up, sign up. We're getting lots of sign ups. Sign your name is when you take a pen and you sign a contract. You write your name on a contract. Um, no, it's not. It's not C. The answer is draw up. The answer is A. You draw up a will. That's a legal way of saying you compose or you write a will. You also draw up a contract. You draw up an agreement. So to draw up means to legally write a legal document or a contract for something. So the phrasal verb is draw up. Um, Cloud comes, you changed your mind. You can't change your mind after I give the answer, Cloudcom. That's not playing fair. Next one. In many countries, specially trained dogs are used to hidden drugs at customs. Look, disclose, search, or locate. You know those dogs who walk around at the airport and they're sniffing for drugs. They find drugs. What's the correct word here? Look, disclose, search, or locate. Going back to the last one for a second, Christine saying, we use the verb redactar to refer to a testament. Yeah. Yeah, we would say to draw up a testament. To, to draw up a will is when you put it together, when you compose it. And then, of course, you sign it when it's ready. But it's the lawyer who draws up the will, and it's you or the person who pays the lawyer who signs the will. So this one, what do you think? A, um, Arturo says locate. Um, Maru says look. And Maria says search. And Oroval says locate. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've got 15 minutes. Okay. Time for three or four more, I think. Christine's not sure. She thinks locate. Shall I give you the answer? You're right. The answer is locate. To locate hidden drugs at customs. And again, the way to get to the answer is often when you have multiple choice to eliminate to take out the ones that are not possible. Now, if you think of prepositions, there's a fixed preposition that often goes with look. You look for something, but there's no for in this sentence. You look for your pen, you look for your glasses. You also search for something. I'm searching for something on Google. I'm searching for the answer on the internet. So you search for something. And there's no four. So now it's 50-50. And the collocation that's very, very strong is locate. So disclose is very similar, but it will be in a different context. The lawyer disclosed that it wasn't legal, or I disclosed a secret, or I disclosed a fact to um, my lawyer. So the, the answer here is locate, but you can get to 50-50 
by seeing that you haven't got the preposition for. Sniff out would be um, correct, Christine, if there was the preposition out. Um, yeah, and like Arturo says, look is also used with the preposition for, look for and search for. Next one. We're staying with the customs here. We're still with the customs officer. And he was suspicious. And he called the man over. Hey, come here. Come over here. To what his luggage more closely? To gaze, to stare, to inspect, or to glimpse? What do you think? Christine very quickly says inspect. Gaze, stare, glimpse, uh, or inspect. See, says Percy. Most of these words are very similar to look, so you use your eyes. Um, Eduardo says, uh, says gaze. Most people are saying see, inspect, and you are correct. Well done. If you said inspect, that is the answer. Let me explain the others. Um, gaze and stare are very, very similar. You gaze at something or you stare at something. If you're a Spanish speaker, it's mirar fijamente, but there's a difference. If you stare at somebody, that can be quite impolite. That can be quite rude. If you stare at someone, then you look at them intently. And it can be quite uncomfortable. When you gaze, you're also looking in a fixed way, but you might gaze out of the window. Or you might gaze across the beach. So you're just looking without thinking about or focusing on anything specific specific so you're just gazing without focusing on anything in particular and glimpse is to look very very quickly so i had a glimpse of something passing the window or i glimpsed a dog running in the street you see it very quickly and it passes but the answer to this one is inspect. Let's do um, let's do two more and then we'll stop. So Harry graduated university probably with a specialist degree in the of psychology. The aspect of psychology, the field of psychology, the sector of psychology. Or the division of psychology. I think this might be a bit easier for you. Lots of people are saying B, field. Elena agrees. Carlos also agrees. Arturo says field. Maria, Maria Angeles says field. Yeah, you're all saying field and you are correct. Well done. B is the answer. So I did say that before, if you remember, speaking about your field, your profession, the area that you specialize in, the field of psychology, the field of medicine, the field of law, the field of education. Okay, one more. Though we always turn right here, I often, mm, what's down the other road? I often wonder, I often insist, I often fear, I often care what's down the other road. What do you think? You're thinking. I can hear you thinking. Hmm. Christine thinks it's wonder. I often insist, I often fear, I often care. Eduardo thinks it's wonder, so does Maro, Arturo, 
Norma, Elena, Mary Luth, Cloud Calm. Yes, you're right. Not a bad. The answer is wonder. Very, very good. I often wonder, and I think in Spanish, wonder is me pregunto. I wonder what's down that road. I wonder what time he's going to come. I wonder what's on TV right now. Me pregunto. I wonder. Very good. Okay, the last one. Let's do one more and then we'll stop. So, it's often only due to many experiments of trial and mm, that scientific progress is made. Now, this is a fixed expression. Is the fixed expression or the collocation trial and failure, trial and error, trial and mistake? or trial and fault. Johnny says it's trial and failure. Meryl, Cloudcom and Christine all say it's trial and error. Percy, Natalia, trial and failure. Error, says Eduardo. Hmm. Maria Angeles? Failure, trial and failure. Francis Francisca, failure. You're not sure, are you? Marie Luth, failure. Elena, error, and Maria, error. Uh, sorry, failure. The answer is error. B. The expression is trial and error. So you experiment with something to see if it works. You try something. You have an error. You try it. You make a mistake. You learn from the errors. So the expression, which is a very strong collocation, trial and error. I wasn't sure how the software worked, but with trial and error, I managed to understand it. <laughs> so well done if you did get that. Um, okay, let's stop there. I hope that was useful for you and you you learned a few collocations and new words. Before I say goodbye for this week, um, I've got two or three questions I want to ask you before I go, because I'm very curious to know what you think. Now, at the beginning of this stream, um, we spoke a little bit about speaking, about fluency. But thinking of your English and how your English is at the moment, which aspect of your English do you think you need to work on the most? Which area is your weakest? Do you need to work more on grammar at the moment? Do you need to work on speaking, reading, listening, expand your vocabulary, pronunciation? Which aspect do you think you need to work on personally for you? at the moment what do you think Ahmed saying listening yeah Arturo um, speaking speaking skill yeah uh, Christine says phrasal uh, sorry it's Christine Fra you're, you're writing too quickly <laughs> phrasal verbs and vocabulary yeah, it's always good to learn phrasal verbs. Grammar, yeah. Listening, 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 listening. Well, that's good that you're here. If you're listening to me, you're getting practice. If you are if you can understand what I'm saying, that's wonderful. cloudcom has been very didactic and very scientific. Number one, speaking. Number two, pronunciation. Number three, grammar. Thank you, Cloudcom. That's very useful for me to hear that. Um, speaking and reading. Okay, Juan. Heidi speaking. Klau speaking. Francisca speaking. All right, yeah, I hope those links that I gave at the beginning will help you if speaking is the area that you need to work on. So do try those websites and let me know if they are useful. Every, everything. Yes, everything. Yeah, you have to improve everything, Diana, but there must be one area that you need to in, improve more than others. Um, the more you're exposed to listening, the better. Yeah, the more you listen, 
the better you get. There's one thing about listening. It's very difficult to teach. Listening, you improve by listening. So you need to find content that you like and just keep listening to it and also vary it. Listen to different sources. Listen to some comedy. Listen to some music. Listen to some news. Listen to some podcasts. Try and vary your listening as much as possible. Um, and Norma says composition. That's writing. Okay. Well, thank you for that feedback. That was very useful. I have another question for you. What are you then doing at the moment to improve that part of your English? So, Maria Angeles, how are you working on your listening at the moment? And Marianne, are you doing anything to improve your speaking? Um, Carlos, are you doing anything to practice writing at the moment? Tell me what you're doing, apart from this stream, of course, apart from this Wednesday stream. Hey, D, do you have anyone to speak to at the moment in English? Are you practicing actively? What are you doing to improve that part of your English that needs improving? Thank you, Elena. That makes me feel good to know that you're listening to me but what else are you doing this is just once a week for one hour what other things are you doing um yeah good uh cloud come says she's listening to some english teachers on youtube there are many very very good english teaching channels on youtube of course they're free and they're very useful for your grammar, for your listening, for all aspects of your of your English, except speaking, of course. Um, downloading English apps, Elena, very good. Podcasts, Diana, and participating in conversation club. Oh, good. So Diana is actively participating in a conversation club. That's that's really really good. I'm pleased to see that. Um, Mado practices every day. That's that's good. Keep it up. Keep doing it. Um, okay, hey D. Then um, try try those suggestions that I made at the beginning of the stream. I talky. Hello, meet up. Um, I'm also thinking of creating something where you can practice speaking. Um, so I need to collect the material and I hope in the future, in the near future, in the next month or two, to have a place where you can practice your speaking. So that's one of the reasons I'm asking to see if you actually need it. Um, and before I go, because we're nearly out of time, one final question for you. What would you like to learn about in future live streams here on Facebook and YouTube on Wednesday evenings for me, but afternoons if you're in Central or South America. I'm thinking of doing some interviews with other language teachers every two weeks. So next week will be Lynn, and then the following week, maybe an interview with a teacher who can give you some suggestions and advice on a particular aspect of English. So I'm thinking of doing some interviews, but if you want something specific, something particular, then please let me know now and I will write it down and think about it. Um, yes, I remember, Eduardo, those, I think I only did one Zoom and that was during the pandemic and then I had a problem with the software. Uh, oh, you like the idea, Christine, of the interviews? Yeah, I feel like I would like to meet some other English teachers, and I think it will be useful for you to um, listen to some different teachers to get a different aspect of English. There'll be a focus, a specific focus on the speciality of the, each teacher. So I'm thinking of doing that every uh, two weeks. Um and Oroval likes the idea. Okay, well, that's two people who 
like the idea. Minimal pairs. Um, yeah, let me write that down. That's a good idea. Minimal pairs. Like trial and error. Because we don't say error and trial. It's always in that order. Nice and easy. Clean and tidy. Those kind of minimal pairs, Diana. Thank you for that idea. Um, yeah, when Zoom wasn't so popular and I had somebody crash my Zoom call. I don't know if that was the Zoom call you participated in, Eduardo, but some horrible young man came into my Zoom call and started swearing and started saying horrible things to everybody. And it was a disaster. And I was very embarrassed because I wasn't sure how Zoom worked in those days. I, I don't know if you were in there, but it was a horrible, horrible experience. Okay, well, I think um, we'll stop there for now because it's been an hour and you're probably sick and tired. There's another minimal pair, Diana, sick and tired, fed up, Arto, Arta, sorry. You're sick and tired of listening to my voice. So next week, Lynn will be with me. There'll be two of us back next week. And I'll be back in two weeks, hopefully, with a mystery guest, another teacher for you to listen to. So thank you very much for being here. It's been really nice um, chatting to you and getting your comments. If it's your first time watching, this is every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central European time. My name's Craig. I'm from mansioningles.com where you can study English for free. And wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a lovely week. Take care. Look after yourselves. And I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.